Good evening everyone and welcome to SC2 Improved Team League Season 3. Tonight we have a match between Skillforge and Vegas Squadron 2 teams who, well, we've seen different amounts of in the SC2 Improved Team League so far. Vegas Squadron, they came in the round, finished round of 16 in Season 1 and then they had a very strong second season where they finished in the top 2, unfortunately falling to 80, gaming 4-0 in the finals. Um... Their opponents tonight, Skillforge, are a new team in Season 3. They tried to qualify into the first division in Season 2. They were not successful. They came into the qualifiers for Season 3, and uh, they tried to qualify, and they did manage to make it. They made it through the qualifiers. I believe they beat New Era Gaming, in fact, to get through the qualifiers. So, um, so yeah, Skillforge made it into the first division, and uh, glad to have them with us. How is everyone doing tonight, guys? Hope you're all doing well. Hope you're ready for some sc 2 itl action. Do let us know who you're... Um, do let us know who, uh, who you are supporting. I know there's a lot of Skillforge uh, fans in here already. We've had a lot of Skillforge uh, spam coming in already. And uh, we're just waiting for our first vetoes to come in here so we can get started. Our starting players are going to be Mizu from Vega Squadron. A player who's uh, quite often their starting player. And has come out multiple times. A Terran player to uh, set fingers off from Vega. And he's going up against Ben Cohen from uh, from uh, Skillforge. Who I believe is a Terran player as well. Which I believe makes this... A TVT. So Vito's earned away in PMs, and uh, we should be into this first game of the evening very, very soon. Again, how is everyone doing today? Hope you're all doing well, and I hope you're ready for some uh, fun SE2 ITL action. This is our, I think this is our second, third division, uh, first division game we've casted. Yesterday we casted AT Gaming versus um, Darkstar. Um, on Monday we actually missed our cast um, because of. We missed our cast because of. Um, because one of the teams forfeited, which is a little bit unfortunate. So a second uh, cast of the first division this season. And, um, well, we've got an invite to our lobby. It's going to be merry-go-round to start things off here today in this best of seven all-kill. Guys, who are you supporting? Who do you think is going to win? And who do you think is going to take this first map? Will it be Mizzy from Vegas Squadron or Ben Cohen from Skillforge? Currently awaiting um, us to just start up here. I'm not the lobby host, so... Um, just going to be a few more seconds before we uh, get going well and truly into this. And, um, yeah, see how it's going to go in the end. It's just waiting, 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 waiting. I assume they're trying to get, um... I assume they're waiting for their manager to get in or something along those lines. As, um... Skillforge's player is ready. And if, uh... Vega's player is ready as well, Mizu, he will be able to start this up. So, um... So yeah, we're going to start up, the countdown is going to be again, and we're going to get into this map number one merry-go-round for TVT between Vegas Squadron and Skillforge. Always great to see a TVT to start fingers off. Um, you know, it's not every day we see TVT. Uh, it's not every day we see a Terran play even, so to see a TVT is pretty nice. Although that being said, we saw a couple of Terran games, and in fact we saw four Terran games last night, as um, Optimus all killed uh, Darkstar. Um, Optimus actually the player who all killed Vegas Squadron in the finals of the uh, second season of the SE2 ITL, so he's been on quite a roll lately, and he's a Terran player. Uh, let's see how these two Terrans do here today, Mizu and Ben Cohen, as we load on into game number one, merry-go-round to start us off here tonight, guys. How will this turn out? Let's uh, set up our overlay, make sure everything is correct, and let's go into the game. In the six o'clock position, we have, from Vega Squadron, Mizu. Of course, this is week one in the SE2 Improved Team League Season 3, and I mean, what a group Group A is. As you can see from Vega Squadron's uh, on the little graphic there, Vega Squadron have My Insanity to play next week, ESC to play the week after, then Carnage, then Alternate, and then Mouse Control. What an insane stack of teams. I mean, My Insanity and ESC were both... Um, we were both playoff teams last season, so that's three playoff teams that are actually going to end up playing against each other at the start of this season. And um, I believe the other play, uh, teams in Group A, um, I can't, I can't actually really remember. I think New Era Gaming must be a team in Group A. I think Team Extreme Supremacy on Group A. As we uh, get out of this quick pause, the 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 level of these groups are just insane. Group B, I mean, has isn't slacking either. Teams like Startail, Cascade, AT Gaming. Um, but these two teams are from Group A, and again, this is the first week of SC2 ITL. As you can see there, uh, Vegas Squadron, SC2 Improved Team League Season 1, Round of 16, SC2 Improved Team League Season 2, second place. So, let's see who they are up against, who I uh, miss you here in the bottom side of this map is up against, and who he is going to be using this gas first against as well. 
It is the orange Terran player from Skillforge, Ben Cohen, who is uh, going for a barracks first, so already a variation in this build, follows up with a fairly quick gas on 13, so we'll see what he wants to do with this. Um, you know, it's very likely that we're going to see um, Mizu and Ben Cohen both going to similar things, but Mizu's are going to, uh, you know, times are going to be ever so slightly faster because he has this, um, you know, that gas first instead of just going for the barracks into a gas. As you can see from... Um, on the uh, match schedule for um, Skillforge, pretty similar set of teams to come in the first few weeks. Uh, the only difference is they play a new era game and then followers of extermination in the first couple of weeks. So, um, so yeah, um, that's Skillforge. And again, I mean, they actually didn't play in season one at all. They failed to qualify in season two for the first division, so they didn't play. And um, here they are now in season three in the first division, looking to prove themselves here today against Vegas Squadron. Okay, so. Factory already starting up here for Mizu, as expected, as soon as this barracks finishes, you have that 100 gas for the factory. That is the point of this gas first build. And uh, you see Supply Depot coming down here as well, so pretty standard stuff, pretty much what we'd expect to see so far from the gas first. We see a factory on the way for Ben Cohen as well, as expected, really. Uh, we'll see if he wants to add on a uh, reactor with his next 50 gas, or whether he's just going to uh, keep his barracks reactorless. I, know, I mean, reactor Hellion opening is definitely a possibility here. This map, a fairly decent map to play mech on. So I uh, will see what uh, Ben Cohen wants to do. I mean, he could just go into the starport. He could, uh, you know, go for some marine Hellion elevator play. He's got that 50 gas now and he's continuing to make uh, marines. So it looks as though it's just going to be a starport once this factory finishes up. And it's going to be a starport over here for Mizu as well. Yet to see right now, he's starting a second gas. So we'd assume there's going to be some kind of Klug Banshee store to play. As a tech lab now coming down that factory would uh, look to confirm that here. So, uh, again, very different openings as uh, the Hellions do start up for Ben Cohen again, just looking as though it's going to be Marine Hellion. And this can work out very interestingly if the first Banshee is kind of halfway across the map for Misu when this hits. This can do a fair amount of damage because there's actually not that many units for Misu defensively, especially if that Banshee is crossing the map. So, um, depends what he gets out of his factory. He may decide to tech lab this as well. He does have double gas very early on, but at the same time, he's probably going to start cloaking the Banshee. So, he's probably not going to get anything too. You know, aggressive no siege tank or anything from the factory. So maybe he'll make a mine and he can get a good mine hit. Maybe he'll start some Hellion and that would definitely help. With a couple of SCVs, he should be okay with that. Uh, of course, if he keeps the Banshee at home, that would work as well right now. As he's just continuing to produce Marines and nothing out of that factory just yet. There's uh, the first medevac on the way here for Ben Cohen, looking to just get ready to pick up these um, first marines. These Hellions will cross the map at the same time. I like this. He's kind of hiding his Hellions right now over to the side of his uh, base, just in case a scan comes down from Mizu. He can try and hide as much of this information as possible, keep his opponent as far in the dark as he can, as it looks as though the expansion will come down here. No surprise to see the guy player that's only on a single gas throwing that down that command center first. Of course, Mizu's build, it's, it's dedicated to doing a little bit of damage. You know, he's saying, I'm, I'm probably going to get... A few worker kills at least with this, that's the point of this commitment with the Cloak Banshee, so, you know, by assuming he's going to get some kills, you know, he's okay to take a slightly later command center, however, if this gets shut down perfectly by Ben Cohen, we could see Mizu fall into a little bit of trouble here. Now this, uh, Banshee sees three Hellions coming across and immediately he turns this around, uh, the medevac can stop, do, start dropping Marines over here, Banshee is spotted and well, Cloak's not ready just yet, so he has, has to be very careful with this. As this Medifax about to have boost, and he's looking to boost under this Banshee to start uh, picking it off, and that's what he's going to do. And Mizu is making a huge mistake here and loses that. Um, he does have a couple of Hellions out so, uh, from this factory, so he has got enough to defend, and he's actually picked off a Hellion of uh, Ben Cohen. And Ben Cohen uh, denied any aggressions right now, but uh, I mean, honestly. To um, have picked off the first Banshee, that is absolutely huge. I mean, already that's a big investment from uh, Mizzy, which just really isn't gaining all too much here. Cloak has finished for it, and this second Banshee will try and make, uh, you know, something out of this. As it begins to head across the map, uh, scans available, he saved up energy for this, so this second Banshee shouldn't be able to do all too much either. There's a couple of extra bags being added on by Ben Cohen, so he is going into a bio play. Mizu definitely looking as though he could go into a mech play, his own command center on the way up, and the Raven coming in here as well. Two Vikings again, three Marines also going to start getting a couple of hits off, and a scan should come down here immediately. This Banshee will get chased, and it will just get away out of that scan. So Banshee survives by the skin of its teeth for now, and just six hit points, one hit from death uh, from those Vikings, and, well... I mean, the good thing for Ben Cohen is all he's losing is some mule time. You know, he's he's not losing all that much altogether. And, you know, he's losing mule, mule time because he's opted not to go for any kind of, uh, you know, engineering bait. to not go for a turret. So he's choosing to save these scans anyway. Um, Mizu actually on a worker lead right now. 31 to 28. 
Um, only a single worker killed by Ben Cohen, so he's actually been slacking a little bit on his SCV production more than anything. Um, especially considering he's got this second command center up and already an orbital command. Now, he should take the worker lead here because he's, uh, I mean, Mizu's still morphing his orbital in. He still has to float it to the low ground. We've seen two barracks on the way up here from Mizu as well, so, uh, quite interesting to see the Raven uh, kind of matched up in this. But both players are going to go into a marine tank style here, as Mizu is actually already adding on his first siege tank. Um, something which Ben Curran actually has over here back at home as well. So, both of these guys, um, looking as though. Uh, they're just going to go into very similar scenarios. Uh, you know, it, it's pretty much the same all around. Engineering base coming up for both players at very similar times. Uh, the difference, only real difference, is actually that Ben Cohen's already got a couple of extra barracks up. Um, you know, Mizzy is just on to add some uh, react tech labs to these right now. So he's going into. Um, he's just going to go into a sim combat shield here very soon, just as Ben Cohen is. And, um, you know, this is all kind of timed up, so he's going to get a react on the med stop, or get a couple of medivacs out, and then he's going to be able to push out with this. Uh, probably with plus one finishing up around the same time as well, as Benko and actually investing in a turret in his main and natural, just in case more banshees have been made. I mean, you've got to look at his vision right now. He uh, hasn't really had any confirmation that it's not going to be mech play. So he, um, it's kind of nice for him to uh, just make these extra turrets, because, uh, you know, if if Mizzy was playing uh, Bayou, it's not as likely for him to continue making... Um, for him to continue making um, banshees, but uh, if it's mech, it is, and you know Ben doesn't really have any idea what's going on at all. As a big drop comes in here from Mizzy, and with the uh, you know the order turrets from this Raven, this is going to be able to be uh, this is going to be quite a force to have to break through here. These um, tanks are going to be quite hard to beat, and well, a lot of damage being done here already. A gas being taken down. Now uh, these first three Vikings uh, will give him the vision advantage here as uh, he actually loads up absolutely all of his Marines. He's going to move these over on top of these tanks. He's going to start unloading them. Uh, but the Marines come back in time from um, Mizu to uh, protect these tanks, so fair amount of damage being done here. Have you seen many workers killed? 12 workers killed in total already here because we've got a Banshee just working away on the natural. This nat the Banshee is on 16, 17 kills and this is an absolute disaster for Ben Cohen. This shouldn't be happening at all here as, um, I mean, he's actually struggling to actually clean up this tank and these marines in his main base. He loses his engineering bay now as well. This banshee falls to the turret, or maybe one of the marines, I think. Um, it fell to something over here. It was this marine here, and, well, I mean, that banshee is the game changer right now. 27 workers killed. 45 to 16 workers now. And, uh, well, Mizzy even picks up and saves one of them tanks here as he just gets out of there. Ben Cohen, he has had his stim and combat shields finished, but the economic... Uh, you know, damage done by Mizu is just way too great to come back from. A single Raven is um, still just around here. This auto turret. Um, how many kills does the Raven have? 14 kills. So that auto turret, them auto turrets have been doing absolute work as well as this Raven is j just going to survive right now for a couple of more uh, seconds until um, Ben Cohen finds a way to take that down. He's throwing a ton of minerals right now. He's actually got about 1k in the bank. And if he could spend that, I mean, he's still got an okay army. 51 against 58 army supply. And he has stim, whereas uh, Mizu's uh, stim isn't finished just yet. So he's got possibilities here. He's still got a way maybe to take a fight and then move across the map and do some serious damage. Uh, especially because Mizu is out here on the map. And I actually think that's a bit of a mistake by Mizu. Well, is it? I mean, he could wait, maybe wait a little bit longer for his extra economy to kick in, but... Well, we'll see how much damage this drop does. He's going to try and uh, lay a contain onto his opponent here. And uh, could, of course, you know, on merry go around this little area here, siege up the tanks. I guess he doesn't have any Vikings to hold high ground vision with. Now, it looks as though he might just try and doom drop into the main base as he could get a few more medivacs here. And there we go, lifting up two tanks will remain on the low ground to back this up. A single Viking going to start uh, hitting here, but uh, these units begin to drop off. And, well, I mean, how does Ben Cohen come up into his main base now? I don't know if he even can. Marine sim forward, uh, you know, Miz uh, sorry, Ben Cohen doing a similar uh, move back in um, Mizu's base. But, um, I mean, Mizu has a slightly faster advantage to this. He's got an extra couple of tanks with this. He's got more Marines, more medivacs here. And he is just shredding the main base to pieces, and Ben Cohen's going to lose all of his production now. And without any production, where is he going to go? He's going to start stepping forward. The tanks are not quite in range. And uh, Ben Cohen pushes this back a little bit. Still over here at home, he's uh, taking down supply tubers, taking down the engineering bay, forced the command center to lift, and the SCVs to pull away. But no real economic damage done. The, you know, the, the, bar the barracks are still here. They can still produce another tank comes out, so Missy's going to be able to defend this. Coming in and uh, he nearly does the medevac. He can't drop the marines on top of that tank. There's just too much here for him. And Mizu continuing to push forward in the main base of his opponent. Gas is going down. Barracks going to go down. The command center is being chased away. And 
I mean, he's trying to hold his low ground. He's got a couple of barracks. He's got a third command center on the way up. But everything of his gets cleaned up in his opponent's main base. Mizu still stands 40 SCVs ahead. And that's an advantage which he just can not deny as he taps on out of this game. And uh, Vegas Squadron looking strong here in the first game of the day. Mizu looking pretty good. A nice little uh, play from him. His Banshees didn't do much to begin with. Then that one Banshee, it was one hit away from death, and that's what caused all the pain. If that Banshee in order to it had been dealt with faster, there's 30 more SCVs on the map. Ben Curran's still very much so in that game. Just he wasn't paying attention. He was too worried about the drop in his main base. Nice little play from Mizzy, the Doom drop to finish it off, and he had plenty at home to defend the drop from his opponent. He takes game number one here in this best of seven all kill. Guys, how are we all doing? Skillforge going to have to rally together here to uh, pull this one back. Of course, Vegas got on last season undefeated in groups. Very, very scary team. And we'll see how they, uh, how Skillforge decide to take them on. In game number two, as we see Mizzy returning, and we'll see the next play out of Skillforge. Hello and welcome back to SC2 Improved Team League Season 3 Skillforge against Vegas Squadron. How's everyone doing? We're currently waiting for the next player from Skillforge to be selected. So in the meantime, I thought why don't we actually have a look at these groups because I was mentioning the groups at the start of that last game. Um, oops, that's, that, is that what I want? No, I, it is what I want, just I don't want this here. No, I want my screen region on top. There we go. So um, these are actually the first division groups right here. You can find these on Liquipedia or type exclamation mark bracket in the chat. It will take you to the Liquipedia. Um, so these are the groups. Group A, the group where I'm uh, watching two teams from right now. Just check. Um, just make sure we ask the map. My Insanity, Vegas Squadron, ESC, Alternate, Nuit Blanche, King Carnage, Carnage Esports, Extreme Supremacy, New Era Gaming, Skillforge, EC Visualize, Mouse Control, and Followers of Extermination. So that's the group we're watching right now, Vegas Squadron versus Skillforge. Um, we're going to be seeing, um, who else we're seeing this week? We're seeing Carnage against Team Extreme Supremacy on Friday night. And we are not seeing actually any other matches from this group until... Later on, I think we might cast the Mind Sanity ECV re uh, replays tomorrow, but we'll have to wait and see. Um, group B is AT Gaming, Startail, who are in action on Friday, Cascade, Against All Authority, Punchline, APS CT Restar, who are in action right now, Team MIA, who are in action tomorrow, taking on Red Bloods tomorrow, Darkstar, Dorava Capsa, Mistral, and Gravity. So, two very strong groups here, and again, you can see them if you type uh, exclamation mark bracket in the chat. Um, you'll be able to get the Liquipedia link and you can click to that and explore all of the matches which are upcoming, which week they're taking part in and um, whatever else you feel you might need to know about the SC2 ITL. You can also head over to our website, sc2improve.net, where we've got our full stream schedule up so you can see what matches we're streaming on the stream and um, all of this stuff like that. So, looks as though we are going to get into a TVP next as Art comes out for Skillforge. Going to be looking to try and take down Mizu here on King Sejong Station. Will he be able to or will he not? How are we all doing in the chat? Uh, Lazar saying he's doing very well. Chris Oku saying him as well. Good stuff, good stuff, guys. Good to see you having fun and uh, enjoying the show. And, um, yeah, we're going to go into this game in a couple of moments' time. So, um... Yeah, we're just waiting for um, Mizu and Art to uh, ready up. It looks as though Art is just asking for a second or two before we go into the game, so no problem for that. Uh, we'll give him his uh, the time which he needs. And uh, once he is ready, we'll go into the second game of the evening. So right now, Art versus Mizu in this lobby. King Sejong Station, our map. Of course, the current map pool, just the WSCS bladder map pool. And uh, that is very simply Catalina, Deadwing, Foxtrot Labs, King Sejong Station, Merry Go Round, Nimbus, and Overgrove. Merry Go Round used already, so take that one out. And Kate and King Sejong Station will be the pick for map number two. Uh, so our final five maps will be Catalina, Deadwing, Foxtrot, Nimbus, and Overgrove. I uh, wonder which of those we'll see. I mean, depends how many maps we see, really. We're almost bound to see Overgrove. Pretty likely to see either Catalina or Nimbus. I guess Deadwing is becoming more and more popular all the time. Foxtrot. 99% of the time seems to be the last map any team picks, so we're just waiting here before we get into game number two. Uh, we're just waiting for Art to ready on up, and if he's once he's ready, we will again, guys, get going into this. As I say, it's on the uh, screen right now. If you want to join the discussion, do tweet at us at sc2 underscore improve, hashtag sc2itl in your tweet, and uh, let us know who you're cheering for today. 
Or if you don't want to go on Twitter, do just let us know in the chat and uh, cheer from the chat. Show your team some support. And um, we'll do some shout-outs at the start of this game in the early stages of what's going to be pretty cool TVP, I would imagine. Um, I can't remember if it was Art who took the game off of New Era Gaming, off Beastie Q. I can't remember who it was, no. They played someone, and I'm sure someone... I think it was Art. I think he blink all in someone on one base. It might have been... What what game did I cast? I can't actually... I It's, it's slipping me. I'm sure we saw blink all in sometime in the qualifiers for the SE2ITL, but um, apparently I can't think of um, exactly when it was. Anyways, well, I'm still just waiting here. Hello, Crowtail. How are you doing? Missy just questioning where Art is. So kind of doing the same right here. He did just ask for a second, so um, just waiting here for game number two. Again, King Sage Young Station is our map. And it is a TVP, which we're about to load into. Um, King Sage Young TVP, pretty standard. I mean, pretty nice for drops. You can come in from the left or the right of the main base. Uh, you can get into the back of the natural very easily as well. So this is a pretty nice map for the drops. It's a fairly long rush distance, so um, that can play into kind of Terran's moving across the map for the initial pressure, I guess, a little bit. Uh, nothing too major, though. Um, yeah, it's just a pretty standard map, really. It's a map we've all kind of grown to love, and we're probably not going to see too much more of it once this season of WCS wraps up. Um, some question marks still coming down here. Just waiting again for our players before we get into this second game of the evening. So, um, now Art says go. So I'll say good luck and fun to let them know I'm ready. And uh, we should be able to get into this. Mizu is our host, so you'll be able to start us up as soon as he is ready. And we'll get into this TVP. Terran versus Protoss after uh, Mizu just won out over Ben Cohen in a TVT on Merry Go Round to take the 1 0 advantage for Vega Squadron, which you can see on the scoreboard right now. And without any further ado, we're going to load on into King Sejong Station. So, guys, and let's go into game. King Sejong Station for our second map of the first week of the SE2 ITL. Last season's runners up, Vega Squadron taking on newcomers. First time into the first division, Skill Forge. We're going to be starting this time around with our player from Vega Squadron. In the lower right hand corner, he's the Blue Terran player. It's Mizu. Polish Terran player, if you do not know. And again, he, uh, last season he was a very uh, popular pick for uh, Vega Squadron. Always coming out as the first or second player to do a bit of damage. Um, you know, the Vega Squadron roster has changed a fair bit. Um, yeah, their roster has changed quite a bit since uh, last season. I mean, they used to have Johnny Rico, they used to have Elfie. Now they have Livezerk. Uh, I guess he was there for a bit of the last season. Um, Dana has really stepped it up as well. He is always a, you know, a top player for them in the Clan Wars. So, um, yeah. We shall see how he does here today. I mean, already one map down for him in this season. His opponent right now, after uh, the first DVT, is uh, Protoss' opponent here for a second game from Skillforge. It's Art. And um, again, Skillforge, a team of players who we haven't seen too much of because we've not seen them in SC2 ITL before. Um, they're an all Polish team, so it'll be interesting to see how they get along. I always feel as though... Um, I always feel as though teams who have who are like from a single region always have a lot of support because a lot of uh, players like to get behind their uh, a lot of uh, you know viewers like to get behind teams who have a single region you know a team they can support their country with kind of so um, we're seeing that today I mean Skillforge have a lot of support in the chat um, from earlier on so again let's see how Art can do here see if he can bring back uh, a game as he starts with a proxy pylon already Let's Reaper expand on the way for Mizu, so he's going to be able to spot across the map quite fast here. Uh, this has to be a Stargate. I mean, it's going to come down as soon as the Cybernetics Core finishes. 
And uh, he's just going to try and rush out an oracle as fast as he can here. As a uh, single SCV comes across the map to have a look right now to see what exactly is going on. SCV scouts around and um, Stargate comes up on the other side of the map for art. So this is on the way as uh, Mizzy just starts his expansion on the low ground here. Reaper actually scouting around already looking for this proxy and he is going to find it as uh, he's rallied oh, to come over to this side of the map here next. And um, where's this SCV going? Not actually shown yet. Uh, you know what? Now, I, now I'm convinced it was art that we saw because he hid this proxy pile on here as well the last time we saw him play when Skillforge last played. And he put down a Twilight Council and then he rushed into Blink Stalkers to follow up the uh, proxy oracle. So uh, Reaper's still moving around. It will eventually get there. Uh, we already have a turret coming up, two turrets coming up, one to protect the mineral line and one to protect kind of the general area of the base. So is actually going to be very well protected against this uh, initial oracle. As the Reaper is about to uh, come up here. And uh, Oracle pops out. Heads straight across the map. Going to look to do as much damage as it can. Could maybe find a little bit of damage to do down on the natural here. Um, but of course he doesn't know that just yet. He comes in towards the main base. And um, well, one turret, two turrets. Trying to take on the Marines. But it's not successful. And ooh, Oracle taking a lot of damage there. A lot more than he really needed to. Twilight Council coming up here for Art on the other side, on the left-hand side. Now, so again, this is exactly what I remember him doing. Um, the, it was what I was questioning whether it was him or not. Um, you know, I was questioning was it him or was it not him. Um, but now that we can kind of see it, it almost definitely was him. As we actually see a Reaper coming into this main base, he's going to see that um, there's gateways coming up behind. He sees no further tech, and he sees no expansion. Of course, you know, put it all together, and he knows there's something else on this map. But he knows there's some further follow-up here. He's going to add a bunker down on the front. Um, now, one thing that is quite a common trick here is that, you know, the Terran player, I think last time we saw this, uh, the Terran player thought it was going to be some kind of Stargate all in, you know, with Void Rays added into the uh, mix and uh, just a bunch of Stalkers and Void Rays. But they didn't expect Blink, and so it kind of hurt them when they had no real defense over here. Now we see a single Widow Mine coming out. It's also going to be focused at the front of the ramp. So again, there's not going to be all too much here in the main base to or can in the side of the main base to stop these initial stalkers blinking up and doing a fair amount of damage first few stalkers are moving forward as uh, oracle's just going to come check the natural sees the command center actually floating away sees the uh, bunkers at the front as well and he's probably laughing a little bit right now as uh, missy is well prepared look at this four scvs just uh, pulled and ready to uh Ready to repair. Now we see a bunker coming up in the side, and again, Mizu is really preparing. He knows he doesn't have to rush into any kind of a, you know, he doesn't have to commit to anything too quickly here. He doesn't have to rush to take his natural, because he knows his opponent is only on this one base for now. So, he knows all he has to do is defend. We see um, some stalkers are going to be able to pick off this SCV in a moment. In a moment. So, SCV is going to go down. Just see them initial stalkers. Some more warpings coming in now. Uh, SCV is actually being pulled to uh, repair this bunker on the uh, left. And, um, it, will it be successful as I question? Blinks in, and he's going to just go straight into the mineral line here. SCV's being pulled, and uh, Stalker's just going to have to kite away, try and do as much damage as they can. Just going to start blinking down to the low ground, uh, trading off against these SCV's for kind of no real damage taken. Now it was a fairly decent first attack. 12 workers killed here, and uh, Art, yet to u lose a unit. With the high ground vision here, you could pick off another couple of SCVs. Mizuru, though, begins to uh, move them back, actually. He's uh, going to start taking down these rocks. I wonder what for. Um, I guess he's just going to try and get reinforcements from this side as well. Now, Mizu is going into a siege tank here, so he should be okay. I mean, he's got SCVs pre-pulled still. He's rebuilding his SCVs. He's on double orbital, so he can rebuild SCVs quickly enough. He's saving scans in case DTs... Well, I, I don't know if he's actually saving scans for DTs to come in. I guess he must be saving. He's actually just... Um, Scanning now, he's scanning to check the natural. As uh, Stalker's actually going to come around the other side here, and this is actually a side which doesn't have much protection, and uh, this area up here is not protected by a siege tank, so uh, we could see some depots going down. And uh, this tank maybe going to have to reposition a little bit, as uh, depots are falling very, very quickly. Uh, you command, Orbital Command lifts so that you can get his Marines further forward. Uh, the siege tank coming forward as well now, as we continue to see this uh, pretty sick Magu by Art. He finally loses a stalk and he loses a second there as well, but that's his first two units lost in this game. 
How how well is he trading? So he's traded a couple of stalkers for 17 SCVs, a Reaper, and six Marines. Now, so far, I would say that's pretty good going. But of course, as time goes by here, Mizu, he continues to rebuild his SCVs without much of a problem. He has another tank on the way, so he gets into a better and better defensive position. This Oracle can be used to uh, reveal the uh, mine, but he's going to lose it! Oh, that's absolutely huge here. He loses the Oracle, and without that, he can't take down the mine. And uh, he has to start up another Oracle, in fact. So, oh, it's a little bit of a mistake there. Going to cost him slightly, as he's now going to uh, reposition and go over to the left-hand side to come in for another round of uh, whatever he can. He actually tries to push up the ramp, losing another Stalker. Now, that was probably the least successful of his attacks so far. And, um, well, tank sieges. Plates destroyed on the low ground. It looks as though Art is uh, thinking of going over to this right-hand side again. Is Oracle going to come back in? Uh, has to be very careful because there's a mine over here. <sighs> so close to flying straight through that mine in the bunker. Mizu currently supply blocked and uh, that will hurt him for some time because he's only just now starting depots. Void Ray on the way as well as an expansion comes down. Um... I mean, Art, you know, the, the problem for Art, well, I mean, there's no stim pack, so that's something he's got going for him, you know, and, you know, there's no combat shields either, so, you know, against an upgraded Marines, honestly, he's in a okay spot, he loses one Stalker here, picks off a mine, blinks everything up now, stops one's, uh, you know, SCV from building a uh, depot, and uh, he's going to now trade against some of these Marines, tanks aren't really in range, he's just blinking his Stalkers back further into the base, which I don't know if it's a mistake or... If it's a good move, he's got a couple of these which will now just go down. Another one of the low ground going down. A lot of damage being taken on these stalkers, in fact. And uh, Art loses a lot more than he maybe should have. He will maybe get away with these. He could blink down to low ground. He, he's going to get one more SCV kill and blink. Gets away with one of them. So that's uh, one more stalker than I thought he was going to keep alive then. And, um, I mean, he still holds a, free, a couple of workers' advantage. He still holds a similar army supply. I mean, the tanks are very good defensively. But I guess there's not much Mizu can really do offensively, and I mean, he's only just getting his tech lab now, so this is going to be a very late stim pack, a very late combat shields. Stalker's positioning again here, back at home, I mean, he is starting to uh, add on probes to his natural expansion, starting to take his gases here as well. Mizu with so many minerals, which he's just not spending, you know, with this many minerals, it might even just be worth him to just start a third command standard, because... In the long run, he will be expanding to his natural, and he probably will want a third command center quite soon after. So, there's nothing really else to spend it on unless he just adds on another two barracks. I mean, he's already on four racks. Um, make sure he get, doesn't get supply blocked any further. Um, he's kind of gas starved right now. His stim pack just started, salvages some bunkers, which gives him even more money. Stalkers are going to try and take down a tank here, and with Blink Micro, it's just not enough because the tank gets saved one hit from death by the medevac. And a nice little bit of control there by Mizu to be able to come down and secure his natural expansion. Oh, not wanting to commit any further forward just yet. He has been making void rays. Um, is that? I'm sure we've had yeah two void rays. There's one and there's the second coming across to meet it. Um, a strew of buildings across this side of the map here for Art as he starts up a forge and immortal. Uh, this tank's been repaired up, so the stalk is not able to achieve too much further here. And the end of all of this: two oracles and eleven stalkers lost for twenty workers killed, sixteen marines. A mine and a reaper, uh, pretty even in resources lost. And Missy, oh, he's had, well, he's been able to rebuild his SCVs. So overall, I'd say it's been pretty even. Uh, both players have essentially been restricted for one base for a long time. You can see Missy, he literally has no other mining here. And you know what? He probably isn't making a third command center because he's just going to lift his natural, his main base, and land it here and retake the gases here. Because instead of uh, building a whole new command center, he may as well just do that. And I get the feeling he may not leave kind of the two bases, because it'll give him two very fresh bases to work on for quite some time. You know, he loses the um, advantage of having a third orbital, which, uh, you know, will give him more scans, more mules. Some stalkers here need to be careful, they blink away. A little bit of damage done, uh, tank and mine taken down to just below half health. Uh, one of them may be going to go down. Okay, we'll just survive for now. A marine found over to this side. Um... Just going to keep on blinking, keep playing uh, Ring Around the Rosie as Mizzy looks as though he's going to head across the map. Now, Stim is about to finish up. This is the really important part of this game. Can Art hold on for Mizzy's counterattack or not? Now, this is actually brilliant. These stalkers, I don't think Mizzy was really expecting these stalkers to come all the way back over here. And, uh, I mean, there's a single Marauder which will take down these stalkers fairly quickly. But now he's going to get taken down. All of these SCVs are going to go down with a 20-ish worker advantage, 25 worker advantage. 
This is a sentry now and all in for Mizu. Art is in a great position and yeah, dropping his main base though, he's going to unpower three of his gateways and that's really, really bad timing because now the main attack is going to come, the tank siege on the low ground. He's going to be able to start taking down this um, gas. Now these stalkers still working away over here, four mules dropped at the same time on this natural expansion, 47 pro probes to 24 FCVs. But this thing is, I mean, there's a second Colossus on the way. Things seem to be getting better here for Art. I mean, he's getting splash damage out. He's playing against Marines, which don't even have combat shields yet. The upgrades are going to be even. And mine and a couple of tanks edge a little bit further forward to shut down some of this mining on this natural expansion if he gets high ground vision. Um, but I think with a second Colossus, I reckon these units could probably come forward and just take this down. Extended Thermal Lance is about to come in as well. A few units just stimming forward here. Delays the mining on this natural for just a little bit. Dropping in the main base once again for an overcharge has now gone. He needs to get some units here to defend this. As he's beginning to lose his Robo Bay, he's only 9 seconds away from uh Yeah, he's going to be okay. He's going to get the Robo Bay to finish up the upgrade. Um, no more Colossus though, and that's a little bit of a pain. As uh, these tanks are still shelling away at these units who move a little bit too close. At the front, this drop is uh, sent away. Is it killed off completely? Maybe. Um, looks as though the drop is killed off completely here. So... Drop killed off completely, Art just has to wait, uh, wait it out, not uh, get feel too threatened by this army on the low ground. And at the opportunity movement, move forward, Vikings being added on here for Mizzy, pulling some more uh, army as well. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, does lift up his orbital command and he will float it over to a new base, so gonna swap bases here. As now three Colossus are out and an Observer goes down, three Colossus, there's four, four tanks I think with a spread. I think we're kind of at that point where uh, Peralta's player is going to be able to break through this, and I think he thinks the same. He's coming forward here. He doesn't really split up all too much to bring him forward with a few of his stalkers. The Colossus is taking a lot of splash damage initially. These tanks are going to go down. All three Colossus remain, however, and now Mizzy can only kite away with this army. He doesn't really have enough... Um, he doesn't really have enough in terms of... Um, in terms of uh, Vikings or anything, however, he's got a concave here and has Art just moved a little bit too far forward because all of a sudden he's losing his Colossus, there wasn't enough to tank there. He needs to come back, he needs to clean up the rest of this and losing two Colossus. If he'd fallen back, he'd have three Colossus, he can rebuild a gateway army and he'd be in a nice little position. Instead, he gets a little bit over eager and uh, now he actually falls a little, really far behind in terms of army supply. He has one one. He starts up a dark shrine. He's I mean he's lost his robo base. No more colossus are going to come out. So the splash damage is not there anymore. And I mean as time goes on here, uh, another observer is just going to get away. But now it gets picked off. Oh, what can he do? He can literally only make DTs soon and DT and gateway units. And Misu is coming forward with the same kind of push as before. He's got an extra base on his opponent because he's moved it all with command over. So. All of a sudden, Mizzy is actually doing much better in economy. The drops have done a great uh, amount of damage. You know, 20 workers were killed beforehand with these tanks uh, firing on the mineral line as well before. And that's helped him come back in terms of in terms of economy. And of course, he's got that extra base to mine from as well. So he's essentially on two bases, whereas our Pros player is oversaturated on one base now. Moving forward here with um, a single Colossus, a Viking will try and uh, take this down. It takes a little bit of damage there. The tank fire, very powerful, and the Viking still helping out as well. Mizu actually just starts to climb and climb and climb his supply, not uh, stopping anytime soon. As Mizu splits up a few of his units and uh, again just holds this position on the low ground at the moment. Simon Ford here with a few Marines and Marauders. And um, again, some more probes starting to fall. There's uh, Marauders coming forward. I'm just going to try and snipe down the Colossus. I mean, after the Colossus falls, there isn't anything else here. There's maybe some TTs warping in, and they're actually all warping in on this side of the map. He's warping in three DTs and three Zelda to try and just do some uh, game ending damage, maybe. Because it has to be game ending. He has to find a way to just shut this down completely. Um, because he, he has to find a way to stop any more army being made and to himself be able to clean this up. That's the two things he has to do right now. A scan comes down though and just immediately this is turned around and turret starts up. And this is not going to be too successful here for Art. I really felt he was, you know... I really thought Art was in, looking to be in a good position. I mean, he didn't kill off the tower there, but he really set him on the back foot. And when he pushed the Terran army back, it was looking good as well, but... Losing the two extra Colossus really, really hurt him here, and 
He's gonna lose his gas now on this natural expansion once again. These uh, units coming forward, but they just get cleaned up without an issue. And Rizzi's supply lead just continues to increase a 50 uh, supply advantage now. Only 29 workers though. Um, a tire like scan comes in. He doesn't even get a kill off a tank. Stepping forward with a few more units and just picking off a couple more workers. The force field used. Uh, Vikings are just going to commit forward. Honestly, there's not enough anti-air here to stop this before the single Colossus goes down. And he chose to make Dark Shrine instead of another Barobo Bay instead of more Colossi. So now he's on pure gateway units. The Dark Templar warping in. I'm not sure where. It looks as though he's going to try and come forward here and just take out whatever it can. But the stem forward from the rest whole of this army. There's just not enough at all to take this on. The Mothership Core will fall. The Nexus will fall very soon. The force field's actually hurt the Pros players. Blocking the Zealots in. And Mizzy makes it two in a row for Vega Squadron here. 25 minute game. I started with a one base proxy oracle into proxy blink. Um, absolutely crazy. Um, in all honesty, that was just a little bit of an insane game. So, guys, we're going to take a quick commercial break. I have to go sort out a quick admin issue in another match. And uh, when we come back, it'll be game number three between Vega Squadron and Skill Forge. If you're enjoying the show, make sure to hit the follow button. We'll do some Twitch shoutouts when we come back and, uh, just before we head into game three. So don't go too far. Game three is just around the corner here between Vega Squadron and Skill Forge. And we'll see if Skill Forge will finally be able to take their first map here in SC2 ITL. See you back, guys, to Vega Squadron versus Skill Forge here. As Vega Squadron have opened up a 2 0 lead against their Polish opponent, Skill Forge. And uh, we'll see if Mizu is going to take a third kill in a row here to take Vega Squadron onto match point or whether Kuban, uh, the next player up from Skillforge, another Peros player, will be able to uh, even this series out a little bit by taking the first map here for Skillforge uh, of this series of the league. As we are just waiting to uh, load them up into Overgrowth for our third game. Uh, you know, Overgrowth uh, uh, surviving in the map until the third map is quite a rarity in all honesty. Usually we see overgrowth be used, what, like, instantly? <laughs> Pretty much every single time, so to see it being used as the third map is a little bit rare, but, um, I mean, I guess we've seen the pretty popular maps used anyway. Merry-Go-Round, I guess not so popular, been TVT and Mirrors, it's fairly popular. Um, pretty much the older maps, uh, Merry-Go-Round, King Sage, or now Overgrowth. We're once again going to be starting with the blue Terran player from Vegas Squadron in the lower left-hand corner of Overgrowth here, guys. It's Mizzy. Foster, why are you sick? What's wrong, man? Why are you so sick? Do you know we've got sub emotes now? Oh, yes, we've got sub emotes. We've got SC2I fail. <laughs> and SC2I O. Oh, they are sick. <laughs> anyway, so we've got some sub emotes, guys. If you do want to sub, uh, there's a bunch of benefits. You get chat badge, you get to use the uh, sub emotes, um, you get replay packs. There's a whole bunch of benefits. You can check them out if you type exclamation mark subscribe into the chat. You'll get a whole list of our um, emotes. We're currently actually only a single subscriber away from meeting our September goal for subs. Which would be pretty crazy if we were able to do it. So, um, do it so early in the month as well. We're only like a third of the way through September. So that'd be that'd be insane. Anyway, let's introduce our other player in the upper right-hand corner from Skillforge. The orange Protoss player, it's Cuban. Up here in the upper right-hand corner. Guys, do let us know as well how you like our new little uh, graphics thing there with the uh, information about the teams and, uh, you know, who they're playing against and stuff like that. Uh, do let us know. We'd, um, you know, if you've got any suggestions or any improvements you would make to it, um, I'm interested to hear them because I would gladly make some kind of uh, changes to it. Um, if anyone has something there, it's just what I kind of made up a couple, of, like, in half an hour or so before I went live today with this best of seven. So do let us know if you've got any suggestions for that, if you like it, if you just think it's annoying and pointless, um, let us know. And we'll try and uh, accommodate to your opinions. Let's get back into this game then. So Cuban takes on Mizu and he's got a task ahead of him because, I mean, if he doesn't win here, he is going to have to leave it up to most likely Senen to go for a reverse all kill. And against a team such as Vegas Squadron, I mean, it's going to be a very tough task indeed. Last season, they only ever... Apart from when they lost in the finals, well, you know, in, in the group stage last season, in the playoffs they had some closer matches, but in the uh, in the group stage, Vegas Gordon only went fourth, uh, only uh, won a, you know, they didn't lose a single match, the closest they came was a single 4-3 victory, then they had two 4-2 victories, and the rest were four ones and 4 zeros. so we're talking about a team who dropped very minimal maps here, so to expect someone to reverse all kill them is really kind of asking a lot, so... I mean, Skillforge, everything kind of, I feel on the line, I think if Q-Ben loses now, I think they're pretty much 
basically only going to be playing for map score. Whereas if he can win at least a map here, I reckon, you know, it's a lot more possible that they could actually win the match. So let's see what's going to happen here. We've actually had a bit of a standard, well, just a standard build actually altogether. Reaper Expand coming in, a couple of extra racks being added on here for Mizu. And, um, and yeah. So, uh, excuse me, I'm teaching um, Foster in the chat how to do the uh, new sub emotes. So it's SE2I fail with a capital F on the fail, and SE2I O with a capital OH. We have a uh, Reaper coming across the map here, and uh, it's, of course it's been out for quite some time. He's already had a little bit of a peek inside the space with a uh, probe. Just left this Reaper back at home for now. Um, gets deflected by a stalker here initially, can't quite get across to get any more information just yet. Much more standard build, build this time around from our Paros player. Nexus is down and finished a robotics facility on the way up. And, um... And yeah, um, pretty much just a standard expansion here from our Paros player. Compared to the last game where we saw a lot of them proxy shenanigans coming down early on. And so on. Uh, yeah, Reaper jumping on up to the high ground right now. And um, we'll be uh, starting to take down one of these probes, actually. So he gets a probe kill. I mean, you guys scout information. You saw the Robox facility, and that's all he really wants to see. So to get a probe kill for the Reaper is pretty decent. He's got his scout information, and uh, all is good right now for Mizu as he moves out with a little Marine Marauder force here. Looking to just edge forward across this map a little bit. We'll try and maybe take down this Stalker here, which is holding the Watchtower. Another Stalker taking another Watchtower. Uh, looks like he's actually just going to wait. Yeah, okay, I thought he was going to go. I think going is the best option. Um, you know, force a phone overcharge. Maybe pick off a Stalker if your opponent's not paying enough attention. Um, a lot of possibilities you can do with this. So, uh, you know, nice to move out with this little army. It's not like you're going to lose it unless you really dedicate way too hard into the natural. So um, it's always kind of a harmless way to just apply a little bit of pressure here at the start of this game. Cuban going to wait this year for a couple of centuries and in fact Mizu doesn't even go all the way across the map. Just takes the tower control and uh, we'll stick back for now. His Stim's about to finish up here. and We may see him poke a little bit further forward with Stim finishing. May try and Stim in and snipe a couple of units or some probes. Depends how you know much of an opportunity he sees. Uh, he may not move across the map at all. He may just sit back here and just wait it out. Just wait until... Um, you know, medivacs come out before he really, you know, progresses over to the Protoss player's half of the map on, here on Overgrowth. Engineer and Bay on the way down from as well, so going to start up his uh, upgrades. Something which our Protoss player has yet to do, no forge just yet. Twilight Council going to be coming down. We actually see a lot more uh, nowadays of this kind of no forge play or just single forge play. Um, again, I, I think I said this in the cast yesterday or maybe the night before we were, uh, I was watching Meta. And uh, they were discussing kind of the no forge or just single forge play instead of the double forge player. So, seeing more and more of this, Colossus are going to be coming out here very quickly, and uh, Twilight Council is coming down fairly quick as well. Uh, most likely for, I would imagine, Blink, so that you can just go for Stalker Colossus. Um, you know, that kind of composition works very well early in the game, because when the Viking count isn't too high, if you can snipe off them Vikings nice and quickly with your Stalkers with Blink, then, um, you know, you will end up with a potential to just win the game because there's no counter to your cut size. So, I, I kind of like this. The blink on the way now, it could lead into a two-base timing as well. If we see a lot of gateway is added, it is a possibility that that, you know, comes out here. First class is about to come out. We'll see what else is going to come. There's extended Infernal Lance. Cuban yet to have the money to really start up another class just yet as uh, the first medivacs are out. And this is where the aggression begins. Mizu uh, lifts up two full medivacs of units and starts to head out on the map with these. And, um, and yeah, he's uh, heading across to the right-hand side. However, a probe might just spot these. Okay, he's going to see them just there uh, coming across, and he will actually just unload to pick off the probe. So, going to get rid of the probe. Uh, looks as though we're going to see a third base just come down here nice and quickly from our Paros player before the Terran player is even committing to a third command center. So, this is very, very kind of committed here from our Paros player towards getting a very early, quick economy. Now... Mizzy, without this third command center, could very well go for an SCV pull. A second starport is, a starport is on the way here very, very early on. And with another reactor, it means he's going to get out on a lot of Vikings very, very quick. Now, one of these advantages with the no forge play is the fact that Twilight Council is down. You're not investing much gas into forges and upgrades or any gas in this scenario. So you can get Templar Archives and Storm a lot faster, which will completely shut down an SCV pull. So... We may see here Cuban just kind of get maybe like kind of a little bit of a build order win if he gets that storm out in time. 
and if you can get enough Templars up with Storm. So that's definitely a possibility here as three more um, gateways are being added on. He's just getting into his mid-game production. Now the first Forge comes into the game. Mizu still yet to drop a third command center and as the minutes pass here it looks more and more as though he will just stick to these two bases and pull the boys here in the very near future. Hallucinated Phoenix sees this army still doesn't see a third command center he's got to stop worrying. And there's a Templar Archive so kind of the, the clock is now ticking before Storm hits the, the playing field. Once that Storm is out here you know it, it's time to go. He's actually cancelled plus one armor so it looks as though Mizu's going to really kind of adjust his build to kind of Come forward as soon as he can. He sims forward a lot of units here. What's he trying to intercept? The stalkers? I mean, he's going to do it. He's going to pick off two of them immediately. So, this has been a really nice interception for him so far. Still just building up back at home. Eight Vikings now in total. Three more just popping out right here. And, uh, I mean, the Viking counts just continue to increase. And there's 11. Is he pulling the SCVs or is he just going with this? Yes, he is. Here they come from the main base. The SCVs on the way. Storm is 100 seconds away. Uh, 50 seconds with Corona Boost. Is he going to be able to hold on that long? His uh, stalkers are a bit out of position. He's got some uh, sentries here for force fields. He needs to just give up this third base. He definitely cannot fight at the third base at all. How many SCVs do you want to pull? Mizzy pulling absolutely everything. Not a, Only a couple of SCVs left in gas right now. I mean, something has spotted this army coming forward here, and uh, the Stalkers are going to try and get a Medivac pick off, but oh, ah, they need to be careful. The SCV is coming forward too. Storm not quite ready just yet. Force fields kind of need to be used here, but the Vikings are just going to move forward without any kind of issue and start taking off these Colossus. One Colossus falls, and well, the army coming in from Mizzy is just going to stim down. The Natural is going to fall in seconds here. The second Colossus is going to fall as well, and it looks a little bit messy down there, and I mean, it is. This first Templar doesn't have, um, you know, Storm upgrade finish just yet. Natural goes down, Mizu is uh, going to continue taking their uh, units down here, Storm's about to finish up, is there any Templar though? I don't think there is, GG well played is just cold, and uh, Kuben taps out, and just like that, Mizu takes Vega Squadron to a 3-0 advantage, is there any stopping him here today? Well, I, uh, I do actually hope so, because it would be kind of nice to see some more games than just four. Um, we might grab some replays and go into a uh, match from replays after this. Uh, we will find out. Guys, we're going to go into a quick commercial break. Uh, when we come back in number four, the final player from Skillforge will be coming out here to take on Mizu to try and put a map on the scoreboard for them. And if they can do that, well, I guess that's at least a small victory here. Let's see how uh, the next player out does do from Skillforge after this quick commercial break. I get the feeling it will be Senen if he is around. Uh, but if he's not around, not able to play, then who knows who it will be. As uh, Guys, we'll be right back in a few minutes' time with game... And before I guess before we go, we should quickly do some Twitch shoutouts. So, uh, have we had any followers to shout out or not? That would be uh, a good start. Um, it looks as though uh, we've had some. Okay, so uh, shout out to Phobos, Sassy2, uh, Ves Vespine Trip, and Scaddy4 for the uh, followers, guys. And um, again, if you follow the stream, it's one of the best things you can do because you can see when we go live again in the future, you can catch more of the SC2 Improved Team League, all the awesome matches we have coming up this week. And, um, yeah, there's absolutely no reason to miss any of that. So, guys, we'll be back here in a few minutes with game number four. And, uh, again, in the meantime, you can also check out our website, sc2improved.net. There's a new article up there about um, the first week of the sc 2 itl if you fancy giving that a read. So, guys, we'll be back here very soon. Don't go. It's time, guys. It's time to see whether Skillforge can take a single map here tonight or whether it's just going to be a plain and simple 4-0. For the second night in a row in games we've casted, hopefully... It uh, won't be. Can't hear any music too silent. I will turn the music up then. It might be because I've been uh, playing with the Vol. Oh, wow, it actually is. Uh, excuse me. Uh, that's my fault. Um, I'll fix it after this um, After this game, guys. Uh, after we have some more music. Um, so yeah, um, Senen comes out to try and hold the fort down here for Skillforge. And well, I mean, it could be another 4-0. Vega Squadron looking fantastic here in the first match of the league. Um... If it is a 4-0, we're going to actually go and cast the replays of APS-C2 E-Star versus Durava Capsa. So we'd uh, be casting that pretty much straight after this. So we're going to do that if it's a 4-0 or 4-1. If it goes 4-3 or so and it goes on a lot longer and uh, Senna makes the complete turnaround, then uh, maybe we won't um, do that. Depends what time it is. So anyways, let's go into our game as we start up with the blue Terran player in the upper right-hand corner from Vegas Squad. And we know who he is by now. He is Mez Mizu. And well, I'm sure if you uh, are a fan of Skillforge, this is the guy you've been waiting to see play here today. It's the final boss. It's the Green Zerg player, Senen. Let's see how he can do. Um, 
just checking the streams okay because uh said we just dropped a bunch of viewers uh, like all the viewers but um, it looks as though it's okay it just looks as though twitch viewer numbers are going up and down fluctuating as they do reaper expand on the way again from mizzy has been playing a very safe style of play today pretty much every game i think it's been a reaper expand apart from the tvt which he used to opened up gas first um, Hatchery's on the way down from his uh, center, no kind of early pool shenanigans, no pool first, trying to catch the desert Terran player off guard, nothing like that. Um, just Hatchery into his pool now, and we'll see what he wants to do as uh, this game starts up. Command center on the low ground, Reaper coming along here and uh, he'll be heading southwards towards the natural and main base of the Zerg player. Start doing a little bit of trading here, can I pick off a couple of lings? Well, maybe, can I pick off some drones, possibly, uh, uh, that's a possibility as well here. He's heading southwards. And we'll look to do whatever it can. Um, I guess a couple of drones may go down. The Queen's only just starting up. Depends how quick Senen is to, uh, you know, put them into, uh, put them as extractors or spoke rolls or whatever he sees fit to make. Um, he gets one of them there as a spoke as an extractor. And the Zerglings do now pop out. So the uh, Reaper just going to pop up to the high ground, and he should see this gas. He's going to see right. Well, you've got. Um, how much gas is he mine? No gas mined at all just yet. So he knows the gas is just starting to mine. He'll have a pretty rough estimate on when speed will finish. It's going to be about the 130, uh, sorry, the 630 mark here uh, when that speed finishes. So. Reaper. Cutting against these uh, Zerglings. Come on, Sam, about to finish up for Mizu, and uh, he's just had this single VP. He's only made one, so he's getting a few Marines out already. He's getting his factory on the way. Still on just a single gas right now, so we'll see what he wants to add on next, whether he does add on a Starport, goes for a Medivac or Viking or so. Um, you'll see what the next stages of this build will be. I think with that position of the SCV, it will be a Starport added on. And there it is, so a Starport coming out here. So we're going to see probably a Medivac. Uh, we could see that kind of Marine drop and Hellion run by combo, um, followed by a Viking. That's kind of the most popular thing to go from from here, I would say. As uh, more marines will just start coming out of this um, of this barracks. Single marine just coming along to deny the scout, and it's so important to try and deny the scout. And if you can stop the zerg player from seeing that that third base is up or not, then um, or if there's a starport, then you know you're pretty much coming at him as a surprise. And you know you can if you can catch him off guard, you could just win the game straight up. That's how kind of aggressive this build can be. As you actually see a rotron coming in for Senen. So uh, it's going to be some safety roaches. He looks as though he wants to take his third base here pretty soon. That Reaper is just out of range of seeing the drone, but now he's going to see it. Now he's going to block it and drone. Okay, he's going to be protected by the Queen, so not much of an issue. Spore crawler. Oh, he loses the drone. That's a little bit of a shame, and Reaper will just get into the base here. Gets picked off. A couple of depots. Uh, Overlord killed but uh, not denied the information so starport is scouted and sending you know the main thing about this is just having enough units out in time if you can make units in plenty of time you can uh, have the zerglings in position ready to counter the um you can have the Zerg the zerglings in position to stop marines dropping in the main base and that medevac already uh, going across the map here zerglings actually going to try and run to the natural but hellions are left behind so sending going to lose a few of these a few more uh, hellions coming out and heading across the map Right now, and uh, these Zerglings just um, gonna head off to the left hand side. This Medivac still coming across here, and the Hellions are continuing to come across too. Um, nothing really here to defend at all. And the natural eight roaches on the way, which should be enough for Senen just about to uh, turn this around. I mean, well, it's okay, it's gonna be plenty. Who, who am I trying to kid here? But uh, he's gonna start losing an overlord to begin with. And these Hellions still just postured, and well, we might have a bit of a Ling run by. Nothing left at home for Mizu, and not a full wall of. Oh, is it a full wall of just in time? But the Depot's actually gonna fall. So uh, the Depot's gonna go down. Lings will make their way in here, and a single Marine's on the way, but not here just yet. So Depot's actually gonna be targeted. That's gonna be the choice here from Senen, as he is gonna be trying to defend at the same time these Hellions which are in his natural expansion doing a lot of damage here. Drones actually coming in for this around. The Hellions are picked off. The uh, Medivac coming back into the main base while uh, we see these Zerglings fighting against SCVs. Now a single Marine is out to help against this. So damage being done on either side of the map. How much more damage can be done? Not too much as the Zergling gets killed off. Uh, still uh, Marines in this main base though. Senna is still taking some damage here. Roaches are going to have to come back in here to uh, help out against this. Um, I feel as though Senen could maybe go for a bit of a counterattack though. He's got a fair amount of roaches. He's got you could reinforce with Zerglings. 
you know, I guess there's a single bone crew on the way, but it doesn't, okay, there's a tank on the way too, so he's going to be completely fine, um, Mizu, in fact, so, sending Kong counter-attack, it was maybe a possibility, maybe if he had a Bane and messed up, he could, but, um, obviously, he's not opportunity to defend in this way, um, how much damage was done? 15 workers killed by Mizu, 6 by Senen. Senen currently holds a 12 worker advantage. I mean, the third command center was del uh, delayed by Mizu to be able to go for this aggression. So that was um, delayed just a little bit. And, um, you know, that will help Senen stay in this game in terms of the economy. Um, all in all, I think it's turned out to be a pretty standard position here for TVZ. We're going to see 15 more drones coming in, which will take Senen up to 60. Um, plus one Caracus coming down, no missile or melee just yet, there's the Bane in there, so it looks as though the Roaches were just for initial defense, as uh, this Medivac is getting very low, which means that it looks as though these Marines are just going to be sacrificed here, and it looks as though they will get one drone kill already, maybe a second, and now going to be a third, not quite a third, but um, some more worker kills coming down, still a 20 uh, supply disadvantage though, for um, in terms of workers. for uh, Mizzy, so mm, I mean he's getting his third orbital down now and uh, he's going to be able to move this over and land it in position it will just be the standard style of play from Senen, I um, was trying to say that before the drop came in and distracted me uh, it's just going to be the melee upgrades again, these roaches were just for early defense and uh, now he's transitioning into a more standard composition as uh, this medivac still out on the map for no real reason mate, re in all honesty, I mean a single marina at very low on hit points, it's not going to achieve anything here so um, it's just it's just not doing anything at all on this side of the map. Um, it's gonna head back across now. It's gonna head back home and um, greet up with the rest of the units which are out. And well, we've seen some tanks come out of uh, Mizzy. I get the feeling he'll probably switch out. In fact, he already is building a reactor on that t factory. So tanks initially because he thought it was gonna be uh, you know a big commitment to roaches and hydras and you know tanks would be great in that scenario. In the end though, he's realised it's just gonna be Ling Bay and uh, probably and uh, so he's just gonna go into kind of. Bio mine, which is of course the uh, more standard composition for Terran player to play in TVZ. A single uh, thing gets uh, hit here as the third base does land. He's going to be able to start dropping his mules over here, securing his economy, catching up in workers. He's only 10 workers behind now compared to the 20 previously. A Viking without a single kill so far. Now, only really two overlords, which are kind of really out on the map. This one over to the top left, this one kind of towards the main. Um, a few of them are still spreading down here though, and they may actually get caught in the near future. Um, Mizu is moving around with the Viking in this direction, so he may be able to get a couple of overlord kills here. As uh, it looks as though he begins to move towards the edge of the creep. Now the creep is absolutely insane right now. Senin is pushing this all the way up this side of the map, and it's almost it's, it's past the halfway mark now. So he's coming towards the Terran's um, base with it, and it's really important here for the Terran to scan and to deny some of this. Now you will get the majority of these active tumors here initially. And one will survive to the left hand side, but look at this, a flank set up from Senen from three angles, and this is a huge commitment to a fight, a fight from him, and this is a great fight for him to take as well. Bane and Sot rolling off creep in the end, is it enough? I don't think so, it's been very close. Uh, he cleans up the majority of this only for the medivacs and a group of units on the ground left, so not too much. It's uh, more roaches coming in here, in fact, for Senen, only a few mutas being added, being added in so far. Interesting to see me, uh, more roaches being added on. Both players on 1-1 one, one upgrades right now, and uh, Mizu falling all the way back. Gets some creep spread, but loses his army for it. Now, is there any queens on the map? Uh, you know, one of the major things here is, can Senen re-establish his creep spread in the middle? Because if he can re-establish this creep spread, he'll continue to hold a good position. However, here comes round 2 from Mizu. Already coming across, he's uh, choosing to actually go for Hellbat composition instead of mines. Single Ling spots this coming here, a uh, medevac picked off by these Mulesks, so Mulesks doing a little bit of their job so far, as um, Ling still see this army in the middle here. There's a fair few Bane and his Roaches and Ling's all splitting up right now. No 2-2 two -two yet from our Zerg player, which is an interesting choice to, to uh, you know delay his upgrades for so long. And as Mizu still just kind of sits just off the edge of the creep right now, the creep tube are going to uh, potentially move forward for Senen. And, uh, I mean, again, this creep is still insane. Uh, these active tumors are now going to be picked off. Um, but, I mean, still, the creep is the creep's pretty good. He's still got this avenue of attack. And, again, if he can get some creens just over here and re-establish this creep, that would be fantastic for him. And this means he's still just kind of controlling not much other than the area just outside of... Um, just outside of his, uh, you know, his bases. So, uh, he's just controlling this kind of area right now. Mutas go a little bit too far forward into this army. Now 2-2 two -two begins for our Zerg player. Terran player going to have that uh, little uh, timing window where he'll have 2-2 two -two and the Zerg is stuck on 1-1. One -one. 
So um, that's going to be a little while, a, a little timing where the Terran could take advantage. And of course, there's going to be an even larger window once the Terran gets free free and the Zerg is stuck on 2 2. Senen is maxed out right now. He's mining off of four bases pretty happily. We've got a no fourth command center inside just yet for uh, Terran. Mizu yet to uh, start that up and looking as though he's just going to stick to these three bases for now. Uh, sends a few units forward once again here and uh, keeps a few back as well. And oh no, is this a bit of a mistake? Well, he's going to end up fighting with everything at the same time anyways. But again, Senna just comes in from multiple angles to try and clean this up. And he takes a pretty decent fight here, cleaning up a lot of this and having enough to continue so, uh, moving forward. Not too many more Bailings, but the army is very clumped up, so he doesn't really need that many. As the Mutas are going to town on these uh, Medivacs, a lot of Roaches left over. There's no tanks left. And uh, that means that these roaches are going to be able to push on through this four is the only real issue right now for Senen, but it looks as though he's going to be able to push this through, and uh, yeah, he's going to break the third base. Turret's going to go down here immediately, SCVs are pulled, and uh, Senen in a great position now to yeah, maybe take, move forward and take this game. He's done up about 50 supply, our Terran player. He has 2-2 against 1-1 right now, so this is his best opportunity to maybe make some kind of sick turnaround here. He's not too far behind an army supply, though, but it could definitely make up for that, but... It looks as though there may just be too much for Senen. I mean, he may lose what's here right now, but once he falls back home, regroups, and uh, goes again with round two of the Bane lanes, I think there's just going to be too much. There's more medivacs than actual units on the ground, and these Bane lanes just stream on four. They're even going to go onto the command center, onto the... Uh, well, maybe that was a bit of a mistake, because there's still some Marines left here. The four uh, tanking a lot of them Bane's as well. The medivac's not going down. The Mutas not taking opportunity there to uh, you know target down the medivacs. The third base might fall here, and it will... Now that's a pretty decisive factor here. Now Missy really is hurt, and now there really isn't an opportunity for him to come back. He is rebuilding the command center, but it'll be a little while before that's really up and running at all. As um, well, these um, mutilisks heading over to the right hand side. Missy is still just not. Well, he doesn't have an army to really push onto the creep just yet. Mutilus goes down. I'm going to turn around here. Looks as though the third command center is going to come over and uh, reland the new command center which has been made. It's going to take the place of that third and we're actually on pretty even supplies. Uh, and considering the Terran's going up to 3 3. Now, the main difference is the Zerg players had an opportunity to tech onto Hive, so he's going to be able to come in. Well, he's actually going to move forward right now and try and maybe do some uh, game ending damage again. Pushing forward all the way into this third base, takes down a lot of these Marines, continues forward with the Mulelisks. If he could take down some of these uh, Medivacs as well, and Matt Fragmiz is just going to type GG, he's lost way too much there. Uh, Sennon just having way too much when he came in once again, and Mizu. Just never seemed to really get a standing in that game for the first time. He just didn't seem to be able to, you know, decide what he wanted to do. Well, he, he knew what he wanted to do, but he wasn't able to really get going. He wasn't able to get the momentum. And uh, just like that, Mizu falls. And Skillforge take their first map of SC2 ITL Season 3. And they're going to be uh, going into game number 5 now. Maybe for a little bit of hope there. A little bit of momentum now back on their side. Senen. Again, he is the final boss for Skillforge. He always has been for a long time, and he, I'm sure he will be for quite some time to come. So, how will he do in Game Six? Uh, sorry, Game Five. As uh, Vega Squadron, they still have three opportunities here to win this match. They only need one more map. Skillforge need three. We'll find out how they do in Game Number Five after this quick commercial break. As the next player from Vega Squadron, squadron will step up. Welcome back. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Welcome back guys to SCT Improved Team League Season 3 Vegas Squadron vs Skillforge. Skillforge on the scoreboard. We're going to head into game number 5 without any further to do right now. Let's just load into this game. So, we actually, instead of a blue Terran player, we now have a green Pros player in the lower right hand corner. As uh, Mizu has fallen to give way to Straight Edge, a new pickup from Vegas Squadron. Um, and we'll see how he does. A Pros player here coming out to try and take down Senen. Who's uh, finally taking a map off of Vega Scorpion and stopping Mizzy from getting his all kill. Seemed pretty devastated about that in the chat. Uh, <laughs> is he is screaming, no, my all kill. In the upper right, it is the blue Zerg player from Skillforge. It is Senen. And let's see how he does here as we go into game. So, let's see uh, how this game's going to go. So 
So, we do have Fallings coming across the map here, initially, against uh, Aparatus player, who's uh, just gone for a uh, Nexus gateway combination to open up with. And uh, these Fallings will get in here pretty quickly. Um, Zealot's here to help out, but single worker picked off, and a nice little move across the map here. Another probe going down as well. So this is actually really nice from Sand so far. A couple of workers killed off uh, at no real cost of him. I mean, he needs these Zergans out anyway, just to you know, spot anything coming across. Uh, probe's now being pulled away, so he's now denying mining time with this as uh, the game continues on. Uh, Zergling going to try and hide in the corner, and uh, another Zergling going to get picked off by a motion core. And this Zergling will not last too much longer in this main base. May try and sneak out to get back out on the map. Um, but he gets cut off by the mothership core, and that's four dead zerglings, but two probes killed. A worthwhile trade, definitely, for our uh, zerg player to start things off here. There's a couple of gas come down now for Senin. He's about to take his third base as well, so. Stargate on the way for our Apparatus player, straight edge, looking as though he's going to head into just, uh, well, pretty simple, you know, pretty simple together, isn't it? Just a Stargate, he's going to head into most likely some kind of macro play, uh, base play. Um, you know, with a Stargate, you can do a few different things. You can uh, go into the Oracle and then Phoenix, you can go into Phoenix and then just stop. You can go into a Void Ray play in the mid game, uh, you know, Void Ray Colossus, you know, something along those lines. So there's a lot of possibilities here. Um, as this, uh, as we start to see what exactly will happen in this fifth game on Nimbus. Um, see, the start getting about to finish, so we'll see what's going to come out here, first of all, from Strange. Now, I would imagine it's going to be the Oracle first, and there is the Oracle starting up. And I say this simply because he already had it rallied over to his opponent's base. Generally, if you're going to go Phoenix first, you'd rally that for Stargate, you know, to wherever you think the Overlords are going to be. So you can start picking off the Overlords that are nearby, so... You know, I mean, it's just um, pretty much here. Yeah, Oracle to start up. Probably going to see Phoenix to follow up as well. Forge is coming down at the front, and it looks as though it's going to be a fast third base from Straight Edge as well. So he's looking for the macro game here now. As Zergling spots this third base, as he comes up the ramp, you'll see that this is blocked off. He will maybe try and commit onto this third. Uh, he's got a fair few Zerglings here, and they will just try and uh, go for this. Uh, you know, the Mothership Core will be able to try and stop these. Looks as though there's just a little bit too much here, com combined with the Zealot. Um, definitely a little bit too much to be able to really push through and do anything. And uh, Sporkrill is already up here for Senin. He's uh, well prepared for this Oracle incoming. So, I mean, not the end of the world that Oracle can't do much damage. He's not going to go into Phoenix after. It's just the Oracle. The Oracle will give him a lot of map control, of course. The possibility to use uh, Envision if needed at any point. Uh, as long as he keeps it alive, this can be very useful for uh, throughout the game. So even though he hasn't got any kills with it, it's still a very nice early game investment. You could even pick up a few of these Zerglings here if you would like to. Now uh, he doesn't really need the energy for anything else this early on. He could deny that creep tumor as well. So just a couple of possibilities. Now he will actually get a drone, and uh, maybe even two drones. He's going to keep chasing, so he's going to get two, three, and now a couple more maybe. No, okay, he's not going to get any more. We'll just get out and keep that alive. So. Uh, Oracle, staying alive right now, going to come back in here and, uh, well, turn around quite quickly. Doesn't know exactly what it wants to do altogether. Now uh, moves away from these uh, three bases, taking a little bit more damage than needed there. Infestation Pit and Hydralis Den already on the way down for Senate, so I mean he's really committing forward into tech here this game. I mean with a fast third base from Straight Edge, he has two opportunities to take a fourth, fast fourth base, which he's going to do as well. But also you can tech up quite quickly as well, because he knows there's not going to be all too much aggression coming towards him in the very near future. And so he's just going to tech up straight into Hydralis. Now what's the Infestation Pit for? Is it for a very quick hive timing? Or is it just going to be for Swarm Host? Are we going to see that Enduring, uh, you know, Enduring Locust upgrade come down here as well? Some Immortals on the way out. Um, interesting, we see x from Landstar, and I guess he's just getting the first Immortal just to be safe. We are going to see uh, Locusts on the way. Some Swarm Host starting up in production. So Swarm Host Hydralisk, Senin not messing around at all here. He's going straight into this. This Oracle uh, combined has seven kills altogether. And still out searching this map for any more opportunities to do any further damage here. We're coming into the main base. Once again, just again, looking, what can I get up to? But um, honestly, the answer is not too much. The Queen's, uh, you know, with only so little health and, you know, only the shields to really protect it now, um, he can't really afford to go in and uh, take too much damage from Queen's or anything like that. Uh, it looks though like Hallucinated Phoenix gets picked off over here. What did it manage to scout, though? Uh, that's the really important question, and answers actually everything. Infestation Pit, Hydralis Den, 
Oh, the few Hydrosks here, nearly getting that Oracle, but it will just escape just in time for Straight Edge. As he tries to pick up another single Zergling here. He already knows about this fourth base. Oh, he makes a mistake and he loses the Oracle. So nice little uh, bait there by Senin coming forward with the Hydras and picking that off. And Straight Edge making a little bit of a mistake there as Temple Archives is on the way for him. Uh, pretty nice to go into, you know, Colossus Storm is going to be a good combo to take on these Locusts. Um, you know, with Storm, you can really push through them wave of locusts just a little bit faster so you can actually move forward and make some progress instead of just hitting your head against a brick wall every time, waiting for your Colossi to kind of clean everything up. Uh, more Storm has been added on as the Hive's on the way. Evolution Chamber is finally coming down, so upgrades will begin for sending soon. As he has a Spire here as well. So, I mean, he's looking as though he wants to head into some kind of tech switch maybe as the game goes on. Maybe he goes straight into Broodlords. Or something crazy like that, because I mean, this is all a lot of tech very early in this game. It's definitely not your most standard of games. No fifth, uh, seventh, and eighth gas just yet. And, um, well, just more swarm hosts on the way out. For now, really intrigued what this hive's going to be for. Is it going to be just for some vipers? That's a possibility as well. Start pulling the units in towards the locusts. There's not that many swarm hosts right now, and that's what I'm a little bit worried about. I'm worried about this push across the map because Straight Edge, he's been building an army off of this free base, whereas off of his free base, Senin has been taking a fourth and teching extremely heavily. So there's only two Colossi, and that might very well help him against these locusts, but I mean. It's just going to be one wave of Locust that he has to push through before he's at the army. A few more Swarm Hosts joining up now. Uh, Locust coming in, uh, towards this army a couple at a time. And will be enough to actually push this back for now. Straight Edge maybe going to lose an Archon as it goes to the incorrect side here. And he will actually just come forward fight these Locusts. So he's actually just going to keep moving forward. He is a third Colossus. This will help against wave number three of the Locusts. And he's just going to push forward into this. There's a lot of Zealots to tank with charge as well. The Locusts go down very quickly. The Hydras don't stand much chance here at all. 11 more of them on the way in the production. A lot more Zerglings. Hive has not been used for anything just yet. These uh, Swarmers again trapped running down this uh, location. And uh, well, there's an Observer. So a lot of them are going to go down. Uh, Time Warp used and they're not going to be able to retreat here at all as uh, Colossus coming forward, kiting forward to be able to take all of these down. Now he is losing, uh, well actually not much at all here as there's only really Hydras left. I think this may be the end of Skillforge and Senin here in this game. As uh, more links coming out, Zealots continue to come forward though, and Zealots just going to clean up these links without too much of an issue at all. There's so many Zealots left over, the Zealots can pretty much take out everything on their own, never mind the Colossus, never mind the Archon and the Mortal which remain as well. Coming forward here, just going to commit onto this hatchery and uh, going to start taking down some drones as well. I mean, it all together here, straight edge, just taking down everything he can. And uh, that's going to be a dead spore crawl, a dead hatchery as well soon. And this is going to be GG for straight edge for uh, his debut in the SE2 ITL for Vegas Squadron. He's going to take the victory here and he's going to shut Senen down. Senen just playing way too greedy of a style. Left himself completely open to this timing attack from Straight Edge. And Straight Edge identified it. He made the moves and he was able to close this out. We're just waiting for the GG right now from Senen. He's lost his third. He's lost his fourth. He's, uh, well, he's counter attacking with the single Zergle. And this could definitely bring him back in the game. Or not. And um, yeah, this is going to be... Well, the Corrupt is actually working away on these Colossi. So that's quite nice. He actually only has one Colossus. Okay, he's actually got one of them over here. Um, he's losing a couple of his Colossus, but there's still just kind of a little bit too much to really take down. And again, he's on two bases. Um, a few more Hydras going to go down as well. They will kill off this Immortal. Immortal taking down the low health Hydras, so just getting as many kills as he can. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of sad to see, but there's not much else to say other than Sending is pretty much done for now. Um, I guess because it's been a 4-1, guys, I can give you some good news, and we will cast APSE2 versus East... Uh, APSE2 East Star versus Dorava Capsa. Uh, from replays, so we'll do that after this, I think. As uh, another pylon is going to go down here. And Pearl's player just um, sitting around. Just uh, actually going to move forward here. And uh, try and take down some of these adlets, what GG's called. And uh, Vega Squadron going to take the 4-1 victory. A little bit anticlimactic there. Uh, we kind of knew it was over. And uh, we're just waiting for the final confirmation, in all honesty. As uh, we tap out of this game. And Vega Squadron take the victory. Four games to one. Congratulations to them. A fantastic series. Uh, Mizu, three kills and then straight edge to finish it up. And Vega, a force to be reckoned with, with once again here in the SE2 ITL, proving this here at the start of their season. And um, really looking uh, very convincing. Uh, again, they didn't really look like they were in all too much trouble at any point of this. 
So, um, GG's were had, and we are going to go into APSC2 versus East Star, guys. We're going to go into the replays for that, so I'm going to have to take a quick break because I need to get a drink, and I also need to uh, set us up with the, um, set the replays into the correct folder. I also need to set the scoreboard up, which is what I'm looking to do right now. So we're going to go into a match from Group B, which was played earlier today. They started about half an hour before the match we've just seen on the stream I started, so that is why we are... Um, that is why we're, um, that's why we didn't cast it live. So uh, we're just going to go into this right now and uh, after this commercial break. So guys, um, don't go too far if you're leaving us here because you are here for Skillforge vs Vega. Then thank you for tuning in. Um, if you would like to stick around for our next match, then uh, thank you for uh, deciding to stick around as well. Thank you if you've uh, hit the follow button as well. Again, hitting the follow button is one of the best things you can do because it gives you a great chance to come and see us when we're live again and come watch more SE2 Improve events and uh, stuff like that. So uh, shout out to Lift Oli. And Randall Flayna, you've hit that follow button in the last uh, since the last time I did a Twitch shout. Guys, we're going to go into APSC2 East of Visit Dorava Capsule from replays after this quick commercial break. It's going to be another best seven all kill here from the SC2 Improved Team League Season 3, Week 1. 